Hi guys, it's Miss Josette and I am here with this week's Kids Club message. And this week we're going to be talking about what it is to be part of the family of God and one of the symbols of how we become part of the family of God. Now I'm sure that you guys recognize things like this. I'm sure you know what these are. These are photographs, right? And I happened to find this basket of photographs from when we celebrated the church's anniversary last summer. There was sitting around, these were ones that were on a bulletin board. There's photographs from all different kinds of years. And these pictures show people that are part of the Penn Hills Baptist Church family. These pictures show some of our kids who are grown up now. Like, look, there's Ashley a long time ago with, I think that's Davino from a long time ago. And it shows us looking back through these memories, it shows us some people who aren't with us anymore. Like here's Miss Sharon in this picture off to the side there. We can look back on these memories of people who are part of the church family. And we look at these memories and we think about the events and the things that we've done that please us and that help us to have good memories of people. And in my Bible, I use some photographs as bookmarks in places where there's a verse that means something about that person for me. Like I have in Psalm 100, a picture of my friend Michael, who he was a wonderful musician, but he passed away. But so I keep it in Psalm 100, which is a psalm about making beautiful music to the Lord. And I've got some other pictures here that are some wonderful memories of our church family. There's some funny ones of like decorating for Bible school. And here's some fun ones of the teens playing a game where they got wet, where they burst a water balloon over their head. So there's, there's some fun memories there. But we take pictures parents and grown-ups and I take pictures of the church to be able to remember these special occasions. I'm pleased to be able to look back at how people have grown and look back at the memories and we look at that and we think about, wow, that was so amazing. And I know there's going to be some pictures being taken tomorrow during a very special day we're having here at the church. But do you ever think about, was there a time that God was pleased with his son? Do you ever think that there's a time where God was pleased with Jesus the same way that I go to the band concert and watch Ashley perform and I'm very pleased with what she's doing? Or maybe your parents go to a baseball game or a football game or watch you cheer and they're pleased with what you're doing. Well, I know that God was pleased with his son Jesus because the Bible tells us he was. You see, John the Baptist spent some time preparing the way for Jesus. In the book of Matthew, starting in verse chapter 3, it says, In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who has spoken... For this is he who is spoken of by the prophet Isaiah when he said, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And that chapter goes on to describe John the Baptist to us and more about what he was doing. And then John says, in starting in verse 10, he says, I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. You see, what John the Baptist was preparing us for was the coming of Jesus. He was telling us that Jesus was coming and that he wasn't even worthy of what Jesus' power was, but that we needed to prepare and repent of those sins. And we've talked about that that sins are anything that we think, say, or do that displeases God. But now I'm going to talk to you about something that pleased God, something that very much so pleased God, because he said, this is my son, and I love him, and I am very pleased with him. So why do you think God was pleased with Jesus? Why do you think that God would, that was his son, of course he was pleased, but what could Jesus have done that caused God's voice to be heard and say that? 
Well, it's exactly what I want to share with you about because we are celebrating that tomorrow. We are going to have a service of baptism tomorrow here at Penn Hills Baptist where some of our young people are getting baptized because they have a desire to show an outward expression of their faith just like we were instructed and just like Jesus modeled for us. In the book of Matthew is where one of the places where that's recounted. In Matthew chapter 3, starting at verse 13 through verse 17, it says, Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? But Jesus answered him and said, let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented, and when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, coming to rest on him, and behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. God said, This is my Son. This is my Son, and I love him. And he, because that's his Son, and God loves him the same way he loves us. These pictures of the people that we love and the memories of the things that happened or the memories of people that we love are just like what God did. These are things that we love, but more than anything, they're pictures that show our church family. They belong to us. They're things that we love that they did, but it shows they are ours. Just like God is saying, this is my son. When we trust in Jesus as our savior, guess what happens for us? When we ask Jesus to come into our heart, when we say, I admit that I'm a sinner, I believe that Jesus died on the cross, and I choose to confess my sins and claim him as my savior, guess what happens? You become a member of God's family. Now, he might not have photographs of all of us, like I've got these photographs of people, but he, we become a member of of God's family. And kind of baptism is an outward symbol of our faith. And so letting other people know that we are part of the family of God. So you could say that following in the instruction of baptism is kind of like an official adoption ceremony by God. Now, God loved us from the very beginning. God loved us when we were born. God loved us before we admitted that we were sinners and chose him as our savior. God loved us because we are his children and we are his family. And no matter what we do, he's going to love us. And God says to us, you are my son, you are my daughter, and I love you. But when we show that outward expression of our faith by getting baptized, that is a way of being able to show others that we have been adopted into the family of God. It's a way of being able to show others that God is so pleased with us for what we have done. When we get baptized, we are showing a symbol of our faith that we are getting parting with the old. That's why Pastor Tim will take the person down into the baptistry. You will go down and with you're burying your old self. And when you come up out of that water, just like Jesus, you're coming up out of that water with as your new self. And that's when you are expressing that you are part of God's family and the Holy Spirit is all over you. God is pleased with us when we become his child. And it is wonderful for us to know in our hearts and hear God say, you are my child. I love you and I am pleased with you. Now, I want to take one second to walk through for some of you who don't know what we do for baptism and don't know what it is. So up on the platform in our church here at Penn Hills Baptist, behind where Pastor Tim stands to speak is the baptistry. Up on that platform is where the baptism takes place. So I'm going to take the, I'm going to pause this and take us up on a little bit of a field trip. And so you're going to have to bear with me because we're not going to be steady when I do that. But I'm going to show you where the baptistry is. And I'm going to explain a little bit about what our baptistry is. Because some people are a little bit nervous about what it is. I've got to tell you something, though. Just like the Jordan River or anywhere else that someone gets baptized, there is nothing magical about the water that is used. In our baptistry here at the church, it's just water. 
that comes from Penn Hills. It's just water that comes out of the faucet. There's, there's nothing magical put in it, nothing that happens. But what is special about it is what you believe in your heart and what you are wanting people to know that you have decided and believed. That's what makes the baptism special. It's that outward symbol of showing people that you have been adopted into the family of God and you want people to know that. So I'm going to pause so that I can take you guys up onto the platform and show you the baptistry. Okay, we're back now. So this, I'm up on the platform. If I spin around, you can see here's Pastor Tim's pulpit. There's the rest of the sanctuary. Miss Carol is back there getting some things ready for baptism. And so this is what you look at behind Pastor Tim on Sunday mornings. And some people think that's just a pretty mural with the lighted cross and just these curtains, right? Well, this is actually, and right now it's empty. Mr. Kevin hasn't come yet to fill it. But this is our baptistry. This is like a bathtub that is utilized as the symbol for baptism. So I'm gonna show you inside. So it's about three feet deep, no deeper than like um, a hot tub. There's stairs where you come down in. Pastor Tim will come down into those stairs and he'll stand in here. And then you wear the white dress or the white robe to symbolize you're being washed white as snow and you are baptized in the baptistry. Pastor Tim says, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And before he does that, he asks you for a brief moment of your faith, and he baptizes you. And when you go down and you come up, you go down a wet center and you come up, a, you go down a dry center and come up a wet center, but it's the symbolize of putting down the old and coming up with the new. Baptism is a wonderful moment in our Christian walk of being able to show an outward symbol of our faith. And it is something that when you have made a confession of your salvation, that you can then do this as the next step in your Christian walk. So I just wanted to be able to share a message with you guys about baptism because it is such an important part of being part of the family of God. So let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the gift that you gave us of your son. Father, I thank you for his modeling baptism for us and for John the Baptist being there to share, to facilitate that, Father. For John teaching us to repent, prepare the way for what Jesus was doing and repent of our sins, Father. And that's what you've asked us to do is repent of our sins and choose you and then we are part of your family and that you look at us when we choose you the same way you did your son and say, with you are my son, you are my daughter, and I love you, and I am well pleased. Father, thank you for that. And Father, thank you for all of those that are watching and listening and learning with you. In the name of your son, we pray. Amen. Bye, guys. Thanks so much. See you soon.